Clinic, Men's Health Practices in San Francisco and Los Angeles. So you got the bad news. You failed a microdissection testicular sperm extraction. You had no sperm count. They looked for root causes. They didn't find anything. Your genetics were clean, or maybe you're a cancer survivor, and you have no sperm in your ejaculate. And you are offered the microdissection testicular sperm extraction procedure done in several hours under anesthesia, and you got the bad news that day, maybe the next day, there was no sperm. Are you done? No, you're not done. There's finding the aspiration mapping. I love it. It's a workhorse technology. It's totally different than microdissection. We just published uh, with the British, a British group from Imperial College that if you give me men with failed microdissections and I do a much simpler, much more straightforward, less complicated procedure called mapping, sperm mapping or finding last version mapping, in the office under local anesthesia, maybe with sedation. I can find sperm in almost one third of those men after failing that prior procedure. The exact number is 29%. And then if you said, well, if you have sperm, do, can you get me a kid? The answer is yes, routinely. 100% of men in whom we found sperm on mapping after microdissection failed, we found enough sperm for all eggs at IVF. And in two thirds of those men banked extra sperm for future use because Lots of people want a family. They don't just want one child. So mapping is totally different. It's a diagnostic procedure, not a surgery. And it's done in an hour or so. And it's read, these are samples taken, sort of like, like cyt cytology, like a pap smear, and read by cytologist experts for hours. And um, all the cells in the testicle identified. And, I think the reason it works in this situation is because the way it finds sperm is different than microdissection. Microdissection finds it by surgeons looking for tubules in the testicle, searching throughout the whole testicle for sperm by the size of the tubule. So a tubule containing sperm might be this big, one without sperm might be this big, and you can look at the size of the tubules and grab the, the bigger ones. Mapping doesn't care about that. Mapping will tell you doesn't remove anything really. It just goes in there and in, in a grid-like pattern looks at the entire testicle through the skin and it tells you which where there are sperm with tails, not fat tubules, where are the sperm with tails. So technically it's more precise and accurate because it's telling you if sperm are present for sure. And because of that difference, I think we find sperm when others don't. So you should have some hope if you fail the microdissection.